Kangaroo Island is just off the point of the Flurio Peninsula in South Australia. After the short ferry ride over, you have over 509 kilometres of coastline and 155 kilometres from the east coast to the west coast to explore. Kangaroo Island is well known as one of the world's great nature-based locations with pristine beaches and national parks. You can take a slower pace here, you never feel the need to rush. It's big enough to get lost and find a beach yourself, but also small enough to backtrack and not follow a logical route. It's not a destination for someone looking for challenging forward driving, but rather an incredible place for touring. The island was badly affected by fires in 2019 and 2020, and has been recovering since. There are some amazing local businesses on the island, which you're going to go to first. My name's Tam Bailey, I'm part of the Howard family um, who started Dudley Wines back in 1994. Uh, we made our first wine in 1997 and it's a family run business so uh, myself and my sister manage the cellar door with a lot of help from some great staff. My brother is the winemaker and yeah he works um, out in the vines as well with my dad. Kangaroo Island is a very new wine region of Australia. It's a very big wine region, so the island spans 150 kilometres roughly from one end to the other. And there's a lot of variation between each end of the island and everything in between. Kangaroo Island is also a very different wine region because it's surrounded by water. So we have very slow ripening periods, uh, which is really good for the flavour in the wines and our soils vary from each end of the island as well. So we have limestone where we are um, at Porky Flat, where our main vineyard is, and the vines absolutely love the limestone soils there. We have 14 wines in our portfolio. They all vary a lot. We make wines um, for a lot of different tastes. They're mainly um, Australian style wines. The fires that happened on Kangaroo Island just uh, started December 19 through to January 20 really affected the whole island. Uh, mainly for us it was tourism, not so much uh, smoke damage or actual damage as the fires were a long way from where our vineyards are. Um, but tourism pretty much stopped overnight when the fires started and that's in a time that is usually our busiest time of the year. We bounced back pretty quickly when they started the Book Them Out campaign which helped a great deal and then unfortunately COVID hit and um, we were shut again so yeah it's, it was a tough year last year and we've had an amazing summer this year so pretty keen to keep that going um, throughout 2021. 
If you're visiting Kangaroo Island, we'd love to see you at Dudley Wines. We've got an awesome view to come and see. We've got plenty for the kids to do, plenty of wine to taste. Uh, we've got pizzas and platters as well. So we'd love to see you when you're over. Come see us. What are we doing today? So today we are going to go to, we're going for a bit of a drive. We're going to go check out Kingscote, largest town on the island. Um, maybe go to Kangaroo Island Brewing, um, yeah, maybe end up at Emu Bay. Nice. Mm. So you what, hopefully the sun comes out soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do not prepare for cold weather. <laughs> <laughs> We've just got all the swimmers packed, all the board shorts. No jeans, no long pants, and they jump off. Yeah. I'm just going to not bring this. Yeah. It's February. We want to see those beautiful clear blue waters mm. in the sunshine. We will. Tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> I've been trying to film this little family of blue wrens here all morning and just haven't been able to get them. I think every campsite in Australia seems to have its own resident family of blue wrens. You find that hole? Every campsite you said you go to around Australia, it's got its own little family of blue wrens. <laughs> it's really fun to watch. Yeah, I'll try and get film of them, but I don't think I will. They're very shy. down at the beach here at Indy Bay. Mm -hmm. Probably get up at sunrise and just go for a drive down the beach and make some brekkie. What are we gonna have? We're gonna have a smoothie, very smoothie, and a coffee. And a coffee. We need coffee. <laughs>
Next, we're going to see some of Kangaroo Island's most famous inhabitants, its bees. To find out what makes them unique, to see the process of how honey is extracted and the passionate people behind it. This industry was seriously affected by the fires, so going to experiences like this are really going to help these businesses get through a tough couple of years. Okay, so my name is Sean Hindvies. Uh, I am the business owner of Kangaroo Island Living Honey. Uh, my wife and myself, Anthea, we um, run our business, we produce uh, certified raw organic honey uh, and we uh, supply about 40 to 50 stores in South Australia. So, so we have a, a website, an online shop, uh, we do beekeeping experiences and we do farm tours. We focus very much on uh, the education of bees uh, and helping people to understand the importance of them and then we, we believe in doing things a certain way which is beneficial to the bees themselves and like to share that with others. Our bees and honey are probably not unique to other beekeepers here in Kangaroo Island. Uh, we all have the Ligurian honeybee uh, imported to the island in the early 1880s. Uh, and so the island is a bee sanctuary. So we all over here on the island have the Ligurian bee uh, and it has been tested and been found to be the most pure strain of Ligurian bee in the world. Our honey on the island is unique. Uh, we have an abundance of uh, flora uh, that uh, is unique to the island and so the nectar and honey that comes from those plants uh, yeah, it can't be matched anywhere else really. Uh, the flavours are amazing. And the only way to find out is to have a taste and, and to test that and to and try it yourself. Uh, but uh, yeah, most people that try kangaroo and honey uh, generally don't want to go back. So our flavours of honey, uh, they can vary a little bit. Mainly due to in springtime, uh, we have an abundance of flora. Uh, we don't actually have rabbits on the island. So anything that is growing on the ground, all the little native orchids, or the little ground covers, they're not producing, or they're also producing a, a nectar, which also gets chucked into the pot of the, uh, the multi-flora honey that we have. Uh, the individual uh, plant species that we have, uh, they may not be unique to the island, uh, but because of the abundance of them and the amount of um, you know, pristine environment that we live in, uh, the flavours can, can be quite dramatically different from time to time. The fires that we had on the island most definitely did affect tourism. Uh, a lot of people for a period of time there uh, were scared to come to the island, they thought the whole thing had been burnt down. Uh, yes, we've, we've received severe impact from the fires, uh, but we ha definitely are not closed. Uh, and there was a big book em out program, which then made everyone aware that no, we're not shut. Uh, and that made a huge difference to many uh, businesses over here. Impact of the bees, huge impact of the bees. So the half of the island that's burnt down, that consists of around about 70% of the productive honey flows that we had on the island. Uh, there was about a thousand to twelve hundred hives of uh, uh, kept hives from apiarists uh, actually burnt in the fires. There's still around about two and a half to three thousand hives on the island. They're now being positioned in areas that's the last thirty percent of productive sites. So therefore, any honey that is coming off, there's not enough to go around. So yeah, we're we're struggling. Honey from KI is going to be in short supply for quite a few years yet. For the regrowth on the island, uh, we've been told that it may take between two and four years before that gets to its flowering stage. Um, so they put all their energy into regrowth, flowers come later on down the track. Uh, so we're gonna be on a bit of a rocky road for at least a couple of years yet. So we encourage you to come to Kangaroo Island. It's a beautiful place. Uh, yeah, we have been burnt, but the regrowth is absolutely amazing. Uh, as you go out and drive around and see that, you'll see how everything's regenerating. The island itself uh, is still fully operational and even all in the burnt areas, most of the businesses are still up and running without any problem at all. We encourage you to come over and see us, help, help the businesses keep functioning and, and running until we get full, um, you know, all, till all the trees re, regrow and, and, and become as beautiful as they were previously. Come and see Kangaroo on Living Honey. We'll, we'll, you know, treat you to seeing what the bees are like, seeing how calm they are, we'll educate you about how important the bees are. We've got some beautiful products for sale. Yeah, come along and, and, and just see what we do.
to Stokes Bay now. We've just had our first sort of indication of where the fire has burned up to on the island. And I mean, you know, we're barely two, you know, one third across the island. And um, yeah, it's all burnt all the way to here. So yeah, it's pretty incredible just how much how much of a burn. But it's good to see a bit of regrowth and it bouncing back somewhat. So yeah, I'll be interested to see Flinders Chase National Park and how it's um, how it's going. Finally got some good weather. Uh, we've been waiting for some nice warm weather and to be able to sit on the beach. So it's really nice that it's come through. And yeah, it's a very, very cool beach with the little cave walk you have to do. So yeah, it's um, yeah, it's pretty special. You can see why people fall in love with Kangaroo Island. Hmm, places like this. Yeah. Nice. So we're just down here at Snelly's Beach. Uh, you can actually drive on it, it is permitted. Uh, we were under the impression that Emu Bay was the only beach you could drive on on Kangaroo Island, but here we are. There's definitely a sign which says you can drive on and the area where you can go and there's heaps of people down here on the beach just launching their boats and just relaxing. Uh, but we just got down here and uh, noticed that there's a pod of dolphins and uh, so yeah, I just sort of jumped in to have a look and I was looking at one pod and I turned around and there was just another three right there. I didn't run up and approach them or anything. They just swam right past me. And yeah, I, I could have touched them, but yeah, I didn't obviously want to, but um, yeah, just amazing how just relaxed they are and chill with all these people and just, I think they're hunting and just playing and yeah, very special, really cool.
So we are in Flinders Chase National Park and we've come down to Admiral's Arch, uh, which is spectacular. And down here there's also fur seal colonies, so there's heaps of different lookouts. Um, you can get quite close to them, so it's yeah, pretty amazing. Um, yeah, next stop will be Remarkable Rocks and we're going to be doing some astro stuff there. Fingers crossed if the weather stays nice. <laughs> down to Hanson's Bay this morning so we spent sunrise at Remarkable Rocks. It was still a pretty special place to spend the morning. We were told to come here by someone who watches the channel and yeah it's a beautiful spot. If it was sunny you could just lie on this beach for hours. So we have just come down to American River to go to the oyster farm shop to get some local prawns to have for dinner. All right, so we had an awesome day exploring today. We went to Little Sahara. It was uh, really nice just sort of having a look at the sand dunes. And we've got a heap of local produce here. Going to cook up some dinner. Uh, just a few honey prawns with some coconut rice. Local KI prawns. These things are huge. Can't wait to <laughs> get into those. KI honey from Living Honey. And some KI garlic salt. So. I'm gonna peel the prawns now and cook it up. Yeah. 
just on the beach here at uh, Emu Bay. Not the best weather, but it's still nice and warm. Cooking up a bit of lunch, a few paninis. It's so nice just being able to drive on the beach and just relax. You can definitely take it a bit slower on Kangaroo Island, which is nice. You can go at your own pace and definitely find your own section of beach. Pretty much the only people for the next oh, 500 metres, so it's pretty nice. It's good. To sum up Kangaroo Island, I think it's just an awesome spot just to cruise around, take it slow. I mean, you can really just go from one beach to the next, get one all to yourself. Definitely don't feel the need to rush around it and it's small enough that you can sort of zigzag back and cut across and not have to do it in that, you know, logical sort of order, but it's big enough that you can just sort of yeah, as I said, get lost. It's definitely a bit slower here, a bit slower yeah. pace. I think you sort of go back 20 years ago when you jump on this island, which is nice, for sure. Weather wasn't exactly what we wanted uh, for the days that we were here, but the days that it was sunny was so nice. And even when it wasn't, there was still so many things to do. Wineries, distilleries, nice places to eat, and lots to see. So yeah, definitely recommend it, and it's worth checking out, for sure. Kangaroo Island is an island that everyone should visit. It's been on our radar for a very long time and I think on behalf of both Matt and I we've had a fantastic time here. Just wanted to quickly say thank you to the team at Dudley Wines. Tam, thank you for taking the time to speak with us and all of the staff there were very helpful and friendly. And also to Sean from Kangaroo Island Living Honey. Also wanted to thank Sealink for getting us over here. Kangaroo Island really isn't that far away. It's a 45 minute ferry from the end of Cape Jervis, the Florio Peninsula. So very accessible and definitely something everyone should add to their bucket list.